It all started with cards and memorization. One of the greatest minds the world has ever seen. Introducing Jim Carroll, author, speaker, and mentalist turned memory expert. He has been studied by Florida Hospital for his brain and memory and is a frequent speaker at MIT. Jim has also performed at several USO tours, working closely with our military and wounded warriors. Now, taking his knowledge and skills to the podcast world, interviewing some of the most impressive minds, and allowing them to tell their stories about how they beat the odds. Beating the Odds is brought to you by Signal Relief, the drug-free pain relief patch. Please visit SignalRelief.com and use promo code MEMORY for an exclusive offer only for our Beating the Odds listeners. Welcome to another episode of Beating the Odds with Jim Carroll. Today on the podcast, we have well-known actor of the television and stage, Tony Lobianco. Tony is well known for his role in The French Connection. He's also received a Daytime Emmy Award and an Obie Award. Please enjoy this episode of Beating the Odds with Tony Lobianco. Hey, my guest today is one of my dear, dear, dear friends, Tony Lobianco. Uh, Tony, how you doing? I'm great, Jim. I'm just terrific. You know, I was going to read this here that I have, but it would take probably an hour. You've been at the French Connection as Salvatore Boca. We just watched that the other day, my wife and myself again, with Gene Hackman, Roy Scheider. You're at the Honeymoon Killers, the Seven Ups, Blood Brothers with Richard Gere, Paul Sorvino, City Heat with Clint Eastwood, Burt Reynolds, Nixon with Anthony Hopkins, Demi Moore and Alec Baldwin in The Juror, F-I-S-T, Fist with the one and only Sylvester Stallone. And Rod Steiger, just as a, you work with Gina Lola Brigida, you appeared in like a hundred other films. The, the, the Rocky Marciano, I watched that a couple times on TV as the only undefeated heavyweight champion in the world. The miniseries, what was called Origins of the Mafia, Marco Polo, Jesus of Nazareth, was I watched a hundred times. The Last Tenant, Police Story, Law and, Law and Order, The Secret Empire. I go on and on, but it would take an hour to read all of this stuff. <laughs> And, and as I called you the other night, we were watching you on the Twilight Zone. I didn't know you were on the Twilight Zone. <laughs> so what the heck, You're awesome, man. Well, how you doing? I'm just great. I'm just great. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm out here in, in uh, Maryland, a uh, summer home, and uh, I'm, I'm able to uh, uh, go out indoors and swing a pick and pick up rocks and make fires and do tend to grass and what have you. I love every bit of that. You're looking great, man. Physically, man, I, I can't believe it. Jeez, I, I mean, I'm not going to go into how old you are, but geez, you're looking, you took, look 20 years younger than you are. It's amazing. So that Thank must you. be really, the Thank farming you. business must be really cool for you. So, but man, I miss you. It's been a long Thank time and, and it's an, it's an honor to have you on here with me, Tony. It's, it's Thank just you, really, pal. Yeah. Thank you. It's, a, it's always, a, it's always great. You're such a f fantastic human being. You do so much for so many people and, uh, you know, especially our wonderful military, uh, you just take care of everybody. And, and that's what we're all about. That's what we're supposed to be doing uh, in, in this life that was given to us and this blessing that was given to us to be born in the United States of America. And uh, you do it very well. And I try as much as I can. And uh, we, uh, that's, that's our purpose. That's my purpose anyway. I mean, I, I, try, I try to pick, uh, you, know, you know, people that get a different concept of what acting is all about. And, and everybody has their own, their own uh, explanation of why they do things. And my explanation is to uh, inform people, not only entertain them, of course, that's the way you get to their attention, but to, to try to deal with subject matters that are important to their lives and that will uh, give them some kind of insight into life. Uh, especially when you do Broadway shows and things like that, which I love doing. And, and also that video that I did, uh, which, you know, I've done a hundred, hundred films and countless plays, but uh, the one thing that I'm extremely uh, very, very, very proud of is the just a common soldier. Video. Oh, beautiful. That was so beautiful. Tony, For, what did you have? Like 40 million views on that thing is so 30 awesome. Million. 30, oh, 30 million is... views, which translates to about 30, 60 million people. And, uh, Amazing. it's a, a tribute to our military. And I urge every, anybody who, who cares about our country and about our military to take a look at that. It's called just a common soldier. 
You can find it just at commonsoldier.com. You can go to tonywobianco.com and you'll find it and uh, YouTube and what have you. Uh, and it is a beautiful, it is a, I'm very, very proud of, of having done that. We received two Emmys and 30 million views. I mean, remarkable, remarkable, Absolutely, remarkable, especially yeah. for that beautiful subject matter, you know. Absolutely. You get those numbers if you do rock stuff, you know, yeah. you know rap, rap crap. <laughs> I wanted. I was going to get into that because I was. I started with the acting stuff, and I was going to get into that, the, the the stuff you did lately. And wow, that just a common soldier thing is just. Oh, yeah, everybody has to see that. If you didn't see it, it will be forty million views in a, in a little time. Oh my God, that thing's awesome! It's just. And then and then you're working on something new. I hear maybe we don't want to talk about it yet. Or yeah, there's something. Well, it's the, again, yeah. uh, you and I we. We have our thing. I think we have our heads screwed on right. You know, we care about this country, and we care about our military, and we we care about the law and and the police. And uh, I'm writing one now, but just a common cop, and what they you know what they go through, what they do, why are they why they're there, you know, all of this unrest. That's been going on in our country. Yes, not only COVID, but but this, this this wildness and craziness of destroying the country is uh, is, is ludicrous. And the idea of uh, using the excuse of that one cop who did the wrong thing, to say the least, and actually killed that killed that man. Uh, nobody nobody agrees he was not guilty for doing that. I mean, there is, there isn't one person that I, that I know that is, is out there to defend him. So we all know that. And he's going, he's being tried for murder. So that's the way the law works. You know, uh, there, why sometimes when there is a killing of a young little girl uh, and, and, and dismembered or whatever ter horrible thing that happens to this little kid uh that the people are not outraged that much they don't they don't nobody's rioting nobody's protesting there's so many you know kids are getting shot in chicago all over the place and, and nobody's doing anything about it you know that it, it's being broadcast now because of the uh blm is not you know going out there and saying hey you know uh, let me take care let me take care of this problem because it's, it's black on black crime but uh, for this one cop, this one cop that uh, will get his due, his due, uh, you know, uh, and be found guilty of what he was done, I, I assume, I hate to bring, you know, allege and all those other words that you usually uh, PC people like to use. Uh, but he will, he will, he will get his his uh, punishment. <clears throat> you don't have to rip the city apart. You don't have to want to change the the whole country the purpose the purpose of blm as, as stated i'm not making any anything up is that they want to tear the country down apart this is not political this is not this is just this is what they're talking about tearing the country apart ripping out having get this one that, that it's even a discussion no police and no prisons that's a discussion. That's not even a discussion. You know what I mean? But that's something that they're talking about on television, like it's a discussion. Everybody knows the result of that. Yeah, we're going. We're going through some. some don't crazy, get into don't do, crazy, let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, we're going into some crazy times right now. Hey, and I yeah. used to be a policeman when I, when I got laid off from the steel many many years ago, and you played a policeman, so. That's why I, I'm interested in 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 this uh, just a common what are you going to call it just a common cop it's going to be called so far, it's, I can't it's, it's, I can't wait till you get that together and and that would be really cool that would be yeah really, I, really... I just completed it and uh, <clears throat> and in fact I have not you know I read it to you because uh, you're my dear friend uh, but I have not uh, you know given it out to anybody except you know close friends for critique and blah, suggestion, blah, blah, blah. I did give, uh, did read it to uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Ray Kelly, former commissioner of, of, of uh, New York, a good oh. friend of mine, and he loved it, wanted me to get it out as soon as possible, which is what I really have to do. Also, uh, 
Paul DiGiacomo, who is the uh, president of the DEA, uh, you know, detectives. And uh, so he loved it. He had tears in his eyes. And uh, so I've, I've been, you know, getting it out. to. to I thought people. I thought it was beautiful when you read it to me over the phone. And I thought it was beautiful. Hey, and, and you know how you're so intertwined with New York City. My gosh, I did, what, what was that Broadway play, LaGuardia, that you did for a few years up there? Um, man, yeah, if, he was, LaGuardia. if he was mayor right now, I don't know. Oh, but, boy, but, uh, yeah. He, yeah. He was the 99th mayor, New, uh, Fiorello LaGuardia. Yeah. He was the, the greatest mayor. He was the world's mayor, basically. And, you know, during World War II, you know, even during World War I, he served as a pilot. Uh, he became a congressman in uh, 2016 and volunteered right away to be go right into the for, to fight world war ii oh, one excuse me and and uh, he became a pilot and and uh, only a year the the war only lasted from seven i think to to, 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 to 1918 and he was only in the service for about a year and uh he became major a major uh, in a year that's that's a pretty high ranking for, for one year and then came back and went into congress again but he was an honest Mayor, I'm, I mean, a real honest mayor. Worked very closely with his police department, uh, Louis Louis Valentine, uh, and they created PAL. You know, the the police athletic league that helped children and oh. work with the kids in sports and what have you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, he did amazing things, incredible, incredible things in his his uh, three terms as mayor. Uh, back then, that was unheard of as well. Three he turned mayor but what he did you you could not you cannot imagine building in the airports uh he he designed the one in uh in uh the kennedy airport as well didn't live long enough to see it built but certainly laguardia uh laguardia airport and and uh went on and on i mean i i used to used to be able to remember all the things he did uh uh, in, in a short period of time. But anyway, he was a great, great mayor who really took charge, cared about the people, was there when you needed him, was, uh, you know, he went after the mob uh, big time. First, as a matter of fact, as soon as he was elected, he said, arrest Lucky Luciano. Now, I don't know if even your viewers these <laughs> days know who Lucky Luciano was. He was I, I do. Big time <laughs> mobster. Of course you do. And, uh, but uh, he was a big time mob mobster. And, uh, and, and you had that... you. Right. You had that one man play LaGuardia. It was, it, you're still doing that too, right? You, uh, yeah. 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 I love, yeah. Yeah. I love doing it because it's got, it's so filled with history and information. Well, you know what, when, when you really think about it, I mean, everybody's hunkered down in their home and, and what, I mean, we're, we're, we're forced to, to kind of like uh, live with what's going on here and, and, you know, be, before it was, hey, everybody's traveling all over the place and you weren't up to date with all the, 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 the daily news and everything else. But now there's nothing else to do but but hear the news and see the news every day and and everything that's going on across the country and throughout the world. And it's yeah. just and as we both know, I mean, I, I'm in my 60s. You're, you're even older than I am. And, and my gosh, we've been a around a long time. And I don't know. Had some great times in our in our like sixties, seventies, eighties. Growing up, never seen anything like this. This is this is insane. I mean, I I've been in my home since since March. I haven't been yeah. out of my. This is crazy. I'm not used to this. I'm the kind of guy I got to be going. I got to be going all sure. over. This is tough. Sure. I'm just all about like love and happiness yeah. and positive energy and everything else. And sure. I think that's what the world really needs, you know. And I think it, you know, it's it's really like like I like. Like when you played in some of these movies, like, mm -hmm. like, like what we, what was it? A Salvatore Boca was that your name in the in the French, French Connection? Connection. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. and and I like, you know, to me that's like watching movies and things like that. It gets you out of this frame of mind of what to. But then at the same time, something has to be done. You know, people have to get together. It's we need to get. I'm, everybody I'm, has to get together. Look, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't pick sides on anything. Everybody should just get together it should be about peace. I, I know people don't want to hear peace, love and all this stuff, but Hey, and that's all it's about. It's positive energy. But I find out every Tony, let me tell you something. The more positive I am every day, the better my next day is. I don't know. That's just the kind of guy I am. I'm, I'm all about positive thinking, positive energy, love, peace. I mean, I have a, I have a blast with my grandkids and my wife and everything else. 
why can't everybody just be like that? Why can't everybody just be happy? And I don't know. It's just a crazy world we live in right now. And, and then this, this virus didn't, didn't make it any better. It just, sure. you, know, just sure. you know, by being cooped up in the homes, people have nothing more to, it just, it just builds up you know, all you, that you, negative Jim, energy. You speak, you speak ideal. I would, I would love everything you said, everything. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, we need what the world, what the country needs right now is that that person to step up and and give everybody this hope that everything's going to be taken care of here and all these this civil unrest and everything is going to be taken care of. I mean, I don't like it. I mean, I I want everybody to get along. I get along with everybody. I don't, you know, I I don't know why it has to be like it is. It's it's uh, but like I said, it, it's I don't I don't know where it's going and and and. Uh, I'm just hoping people step up and and try to resolve this in in a in a good way instead of the way it yeah. looks like it's heading. You know, the one thing you don't want to do is hey, this person arms and that person arms up, and next one it, that doesn't go. It's not going to get well, anywhere. That's where we're at. That's it's where we're at. Not uh, going to get anywhere that way. Unfortunately, people that more guns are being bought to protect themselves against this. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, that's that's where it's at, unfortunately. Yeah. It's and a I weird can... situation, yeah, because you can't blame the person for wanting to do that to protect their family, but at yeah. the same time, I there, there has <laughs> to be another there has to be another solution, and and somebody has to step up. I'm talking nationally, and just take this thing and say, hey, this is what we're you know we people need hope, especially like li- listeners of this and and stuff like that. We have we have wounded warriors, mm. uh, as you know, with with suffering from. PTS, PTSD, whatever, however you want to describe it, and and they're alone right now, and and they're hearing all of the media, and I mean, people need hope, you know. You don't need more, you know. Th- th- oh, I hate, I hate violence, man. I really do. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, we, we, it's all right to watch it in movies and everything else, like, but in real life, I'm, I'm not. I don't even. Yeah, I can't even believe I'm talking about this stuff. I don't usually go there. I, I'm, I'm, I never, I never talk about this. It, it's yeah. really. You know, I try to be as positive and and send across a positive <laughs> message of hope and love and everything else. And and this, yep. what's going yep. on? I don't, I don't know if you could defeat it with love. I don't. I and and you know, I think you have. You know, sometimes now it's a tremendous uh, Jim. It's just a different ideology. Very difficult to change an ideology, and uh, that's what we're up against. Uh, a, a you know, the words don't mean anything anymore. From either side, that's a real problem. Uh, and, you know, it says a hatred. There's a strong, strong hatred out here for authority. You know, of, of any kind, and nobody seems to believe the other person uh, for what they when they speak, and know that they have political uh, reasons for for their disagreement. It has nothing to do with reality. It has to do with the uh, future, you know, of, of, of taking power in November. And that's where it's at. I mean, I mean that's that's what the biggest uh, biggest problem is. And uh, I wish, it, I, I wish I there were did. a way of uh, somebody, something, some in-between normal human being who was able to talk to both sides but apparently from history what we're going through now i don't see that person i don't see that person uh because it's not believed on either side i mean this is crazy yeah we're you have to. With insanity you know i mean yeah. i have a lot of people i mean whether my political preference i you know i i i have people that are complete opposite of me and and i get along with them really well i mean there's a way to resolve issues and problems without the violence i mean that's because that that's not a solution i mean what, once one person gets violent the other one gets more violent and before you know it just it's it, there's there's no there's no solution there you have to solve the resolve the problem and the issues in, right. in a i don't know this it just really yeah. upset you know it upsets me because that's not what i'm about i'm about helping people with their brain disorders and things like that and Sure. This stuff interferes. Sure. This causes more brain disorders and it causes people to be scared and, and everything else. And especially the people that are alone, you know, I'm trying to put positive things in their mind and get them to buy like what I do. I, you know, when I get in a bad mood or a negative mood, I, I get out of it with positive results and I'll go down and lift weights. I'll study some, 
yeah, I don't know. This is crazy, Tony, what's going on. But, you know, no. so it's hopefully, hopefully we, we have these people step up and, and resolve all of this and, and get along. I mean, it's so everybody's just so apart right now. And it's you're never going to come up with a solution if you're yeah, we seem to be divided on every yeah. issue. Yeah. If if uh, if people go back to school, no, the, it always has to be the other half. That's I know, I know. To one half wants to go back to school. The other half, that whatever it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a total divide. Oh, I'll be honest with you. I would love to have. I'm not saying I'm the guy that could, but if I would have three people from one side and three people from the other side in a room with me, I mm -hmm. I'll bet you I would change things a little bit with the, with the way I deal with people with the brain. I, I just know it. I just know it. And because yeah. I could see both sides, I could see, you know, I could, I could put myself in in that position. I've been in that position for God's sakes. I've been, you know, for, Hey, I worked at a steel mill. I got laid. I I've seen a lot of different things in life. I, I I've been in the pits of, I've, I've grown up. Oh man. I don't even want to get into it here. You, you're, you're getting something yeah. out of me now that I don't want people to know about it. And, and, <laughs> But yeah, I could see both sides and I could see, but I, I know that to resolve it, th there's, a, there are better ways to resolve this than what we're doing right now. It's just going to, it's just going to get worse. And, and I don't want to see that happen. I mean, I have a lot of, a lot of friends on both sides here and, and I got to be, I'm like right in the middle. I, I could, you know, I've, I've always been that way, a middle of the road guy, even with presidential mm -hmm. elections. I, I always voted for the best person. I didn't. I didn't vote my. Po yeah, right. I voted for the best person who I thought was the best person. You know, yeah. let's, let's talk acting. Well, that's that's <laughs> what this is supposed to be about. <laughs> like I said, I I like I like your 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 career is amazing. I mean, it's uh, it's just like I said that, yeah. and then the stuff that you're that when you did the common soldier thing and read that poem and yeah, that's what that's to me. That's what I like to talk about. It, it's uh. This takes me off of my game here. It's it's, it's, it's not, I'm not an expert in this. In, I'm not a politician. I'm not an expert in this at all. I mean, what I what I take pride in is is uh, knowing how the brain works with memory and, and and how it affects your health and everything else. And so you're greatly needed now, my friend. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and with everybody isolated like this, I'm trying to come up with ways to help them get that negative energy out of their brain, you know, and fill it with more, yeah. uh, the, the fill that void with positive energy. And, and then when you get talking into, into things like, like politics and stuff like that, it's, you can't help but yeah. steer toward the negative direction when you talk politically. And that's why I never. Yeah. Uh, and, and, so, and sometimes, you know, I'm not even, you know, I don't even feel like I'm, I'm talking politics. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking about reality of what is happening, what has happened to the country, slowly what's happening, and now it's come to fruition. This is where we're at. And, and maybe that's and what we need, you know? Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need all of this to happen right now, and let's get it all out in the open, and and maybe these people will step up and, and resolve this issue in the in a hopefully a, a peaceful, positive way, and... And maybe it's good that it's happening. I say I always try to find the positive in things, Tony. I maybe this is a good thing. This is happening. I don't know. I, like I said, I, 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 I really don't know what's going on. I, I, I should research it more. And and uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I, you know, I'm just all anyway. about helping, you know, people. But right yeah, now, this is helping people I, too. You know what I mean? You gotta with this this situation. Is there people getting hurt and injured and? dying on both sides in the streets sure. and we we don't want that and it's that shouldn't be happening no and not at and, all uh, not at all yeah but uh yeah so uh hey you know someone and you 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 worked in police story for god's sake so yeah you you kind of like played a, a police officer and now you're you know it's amazing how how life works like that it, it's just really and then you also played salvatore boca which is the other side of the so, so you side. played well, I, you both know, sides, you know. Well, sure. But uh, that's my uh, research. And when I, on both sides of the aisle, uh, I know both sides of the aisle very well, very well. Uh, when I, when I, uh, my, my dearest friend was Sonny Grasso. 
you know, who who was the fellow who story he and Eddie Egan uh, was the French Connection and Seven Ups. Yeah, that was a true story, the French Connection. Tell everybody, yeah, that was definitely based oh, yeah. on a true story. Yeah, absolutely true story. Yep, yeah. the highest, the biggest bust of drugs uh, up to date, up to that date. And uh, both Sonny Grasso and, and Eddie Egan uh, bro- broke that case. And uh, so I hung out with them and I went on many, many uh, cases with them. You know, when I when I in, in, in New York City, uh, in fact, uh, I was first the first night I went out to, with them on, on a calls. Uh, the first night uh, we went to a, a abandoned building in, in Harlem. And as we were going up the stairs uh, to a reported murder on the top floor, uh, there was a fellow sitting on the steps with a needle in his arm with a bubble about just about to burst. Now, doubt as we passed by him, Sonny just pulled the needle out, threw it on the ground and saved this guy's life just, uh, just in passing. And as we went on up to this, uh, the top of the, the roof, which was, of course, blown away uh, by uh, weather. It was abandoned building. Uh, we were going back to uh, see this cop who was who was guarding a dead body. Just this is opening. This is close. This is the first my first uh, adventure of that one night. Uh, guarding this body who was shot in the back, and his this cop, black cop, as a matter of fact, his brother, who was also a cop, was killed last the week before uh, by by uh, black liber by. Uh, uh, the Black Panthers. Now, um, we uh, left that scene and then we got called to another one. And in an alleyway, we found a woman who was shot in the back in an alley. This is all in one night, shot in the back. And as we were looking at that situation, some guy jumped off a roof to his death. This, this is in Harlem, all in one night, all my first night out with them and uh, killed himself. It's, it was, it's like a war zone, you see? And uh, all that information, you know, I've been on everything you could imagine, stick-ups, wow. uh, drug busts. What year was that? Uh, well, before French Connection. Yeah. The 70s. Uh, you're, you're originally from that area, Brooklyn, right? You, you, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you've been... And, you know, the mob guys, they loved what I did when I played my mob characters. So they would, you know, if I was at a casino <laughs> or Atlantic City. You're still scary looking, look at, man. Every, when I look at you right now, you're like, you're like, you were like, uh, you, you were like the, uh, the one of the, you were before Al Pacino and Robert De Niro started there. You were before the Godfather. And for, oh, my God. Yeah, you're like was, the original yeah, I, guy. I, I was the original yeah, yeah. guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. You still got that look, yeah. though. Even that. Well, how old are you? You're eight. You're 80. Going to be 84. Wow. In October, <laughs> you still got that. Think about Don't that. screw with me. Look, man, it's like really cool. It's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me that look, Tony. Yeah, Let I, me see I, that I, look. I, like, I, give I, me that I, look. Let me see that. That don't give me that look. Which, which one? Don't, don't screw with me. Look, like, <laughs> give me which, what? like, don't, don't mess with me. Look, I like that. Yeah, don't mess with me, look. you know, it's funny. My, my wife put on a, a television show last night, <clears throat> uh, Murder She Wrote, <clears throat> that I didn't even remember I was in. And uh, uh, so I was in this this thing called Proof in the Pudding, uh, silly silly show. But uh, uh, and and there were scenes I was doing with Johnny with John Saxon, uh, whose real name is Carmine Enrico from Brooklyn, went to New York High School in Brooklyn. But uh, he um, we had a scene here that I barely remembered being in, and I I at the end of it I get shot. I didn't even remember getting shot in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. But, you know, it's funny, you know, because when I watch myself, I'm always looking for improvement, you know, and when I watch myself with a film, I, I look to see, you know, how I could have done it better or how I could fix it and so on and so forth. Now it's too late, but it's a learning process for the next time. And it's all alert to me. That's what life is all about. Life is a learning process to not to make the mistakes to, for, to aiming to perfection, which of course we never achieve, but that's what's the fun about it, you know. Uh, that's what's fun about life is is uh, it keeps you going, but you got to keep moving forward in terms of getting it right, getting it right, fixing it, fixing it. And as a director, that's what I do all the time. I look behind the lines, 
not what they're saying, but what they mean by it. Underneath. Yeah, and you directed and, a bunch of films, and you you produced a lot of films. That's right. We didn't talk about that. You were a director, a producer, and and uh, hey, let me ask you. I I, I have to ask you. I, I never asked you this. Like, of out of all the fictitious characters you played, what which one did you like the most? Was it Sal from French Connect? Who was it? Was it what? What was your best role you played? <clears throat> like, well. You play probably 100 a hundred different names. Like, which one do you remember? Which stands out? Like, did anybody ever like back in the, in the 70s when the French connection was out? Did anybody go, hey, Sal, yeah. did anybody ever actually call you Salvador? <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. It happens. It happens quite a bit. Uh, and and what the compliment mo most times is they remember my lines. You know, the, 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 the lines, the lines that I uh, that I utter in, in the movie. Some of them I, are mine, uh, and uh, but they remember those lines, um, you know. And uh, and it's funny, you know. Sometimes <clears throat> I will when I form a character, and uh, there there is a tribute <laughs> that I play. Uh, it's it's the it's the like the uh, the uh, uh, a tribute a tribute to either a friend relative or a family member in a either a line reading or a gesture or a or, or a uh, uh, some some kind of motion that is that, that is uh, uh, relevant to that person and that person generally can pick it up you know <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact one time <clears throat> I did a play <clears throat> for the late Larry Cohen called uh, Oh boy, this is a long time ago. Uh, Nature of the crime. Wow, that I remember wow. that way, way back in the '60s. And uh, I based the character on a poker playing buddy of mine, and had and and formed that character. And and he came to the show and said, "Oh my God, that's me! That's me!" Because of the characteristics that he was doing, the, the things that he, you know, bits and pieces of, uh, of, uh, of creation. That's why uh, my life is observation. Um, I'm always watching to see uh, what is behind what's going on and understanding what's going to happen in the future from history. And history is the greatest teacher of all. That's why I'm a little dumbfounded how we've gone through this life and many lives with the uh, uh, seeing what kind of different governments fail or political stuff happens and, and you're supposed to now see what fail, what they not stay away from. But now we are seen to be approaching a failed idea of, of uh, what kind of government want, they want to take over. But anyway, I'm back to power. Yeah. I'm back to that. Well, again. you've been but around. I, hey, look, always, at, look, yeah. at, let me tell you something. You you have the right to talk about that. I mean, you've been around. You've, you, you, 80, you're 83 years old, for God's sakes. You've seen it happen. I mean, people should look at, look at, you'd be one of those guys that I'd want in the room to represent your ideas and your thought. You know what I mean? It would be amazing. That's the way you resolve things and you get everybody mm. to just talk it out and, like, like, look, there's another, what, what, what did you like, talk, talking about, did you ever work with Robert De Niro? You know, we had an opportunity. Yeah. Um, we had an, we did a play, a play, excuse me. I was doing a play at the time, Yanks three, Detroit, nothing. I remember that. Seventh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I played a, I played a Yankee baseball yeah. player, uh, a pitcher on the mound, practically a monologue, the show was amazing. Uh, but at that time, Mike Nichols, the great Mike Nichols director, uh, was doing a play, a movie called Bogart Slept Here. And um, like Neil Simon, the great Neil Simon, was the writer of the script. 20th Century Fox was producing it. And uh, we, they asked me to come on and do it. And, and Robert De Niro was starring in it with the, Marsha Mason, uh, which at the time was uh, Neil Simon's wife, the, the author. And so I took a week off from the play, went out to California uh, for the first week of rehearsal and so on. And lo and behold, uh, 
they fired De Niro. They fired him. I don't know truly what the reason was, but I know that that Neil uh, was having problems with the scene that he wrote that put his wife in bed with the other character, which De Niro was playing, and he could not stand it. <laughs> I don't know what, what the heck that was all about, but they didn't think he was funny, blah, 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 blah. they fired him, and that was the end of that movie. That was about uh, $2 million down the drain, because they had already shot some scenes and so on and so forth. And uh, I, was, I was to play De Niro's brother. To answer your question. Well, see, see, now to me, now this is just my opinion. I would love to get you and him in a room. And I think we could resolve a lot of problems politically right there with the two. If you two guys could get along in a room, then the whole country should be able to get along. Because you, you see. But we do get along. Oh, my it's God. Funny. That's we, amazing. We yeah. We, uh, with uh, when we see each other, yeah. we have great deal to respect for each other. That's a good. See, yeah, and you got yeah, you bo both have two opposite views of the country right now. So if you could get along, then everybody should get be able to get along. That's how, that's the way I would resolve it. If I was the guy that had to try to help resolve this, I'd get people like you guys mm. together and have a talk. And and uh, you know, it's 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 just it's just amazing how mm. it works. Like, and, and, hey, you're a member of the Italian American National Hall of Fame, right? Tell me about that. I because I what what exactly like who who's who else is in that? And tell me about that. You know, it's something I uh, <laughs> I don't pay much attention. Really? Too. I think that'd be like yeah. an honor, man, to be a member. It yeah, is an yeah. honor. It is an honor. But uh, you know, uh, I, I I don't dwell on it. The honors basically. Uh, uh, and I don't really know. Uh, I just know they put me in you there. You got so many like, awards, Tony. I, I don't, man, I, I can't even, when I was looking at your list on, on the IMDB database, and like, I've never, mm -hmm. that's amazing what you've accomplished in your career. It's just amazing. But you're such a cool mm -hmm. guy too. People got to know, sure. You, you have, you, look at, you have a right being 83 years old and you've seen it all. You've seen the, like, I don't know how many presidents you've lived through, because I've, I've seen what well, yeah. I think my president was Eisenhower when I was born. So I've lived through a lot of presidents. You lived through more than I did. Yeah. And, and yeah. you. Yeah, my first voting was uh, Kennedy. Really? I that was your first voting president. How about in your life? Like when you were a little kid, who was the president? Do you remember? Yeah, Roosevelt. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, during. That's yeah, amazing. You know, well, well, I was born in 36. Wow. So. So there's a lot of, a lot of carryings on of good. Who, who, who the heck remembers? Yeah. I just remember one time when, when my father was very sad and I said to him, what's the matter, dad? He said, a great man died today. And it was LaGuardia. Yeah. And how about that? Uh, 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 that many, I was a kid. I was a, I must have been, I don't know, young, quite young. Uh, and I, I and and then I wind up playing the life of, I know. of LaGuardia. He was a great mayor, and, and you did a great, great, great job with that. I mean, that was that Thanks. was uh, that's when I I, I think the uh, first how well, long I know you, I, I forgot where we met. It was somewhere in New York, and and I know shortly afterwards you were, you were doing the LaGuardia thing. So it was a while ago because you've been doing that a while. I think our great was it our great friend uh, B Bill Chatfield. Yeah, Bill Chatfield, that's who it was. Yeah, we 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 met in New York with Bill Chat, the one and only, the Honorable Bill Chatfield, and he he, he, he actually yeah, dear, worked dear with, with the Reagan administration or something, and that's he yeah. Was, yeah. But I, I'm serious. Yeah, I think that's who, I think that's where we met. Yeah. It was down somewhere where you were doing. You would. Uh, we were at a table around a table. Yeah. At, and I and I believe that's when you were doing some. some at a uh, restaurant. Yeah, at, yeah, in New York somewhere, or outside of New York, yeah. somewhere down there in Chaffee. Yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. And and and, I, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I know you from these movies, and but but hey, I I think that's the solution. Tony Lobianco, Robert De Niro. That's a start. Then get two other guys in a different realm, maybe two athletes that disagree, two politicians that I, that's what it, we got to resolve this and we got to resolve it yeah. in a in a peaceful way because we're all here for the same reason. You know what I mean? Every right. nobody's different from anybody. We're all the same. All right. We all have a brain. We all have a heart and it's all the same. And yeah. that's why I look at things and it could be worked out. And, and it's just, you know, I'm you know. with you, pal. I'm with you. I'd love to. I'd love to get a, get some kind of a solution to this 
madness. It is, and we're heading in the wrong, unfortunately, yeah. wrong and direction. We don't want but, that. Uh, Neither one of us do, and we don't want it for our for our kids or grandkids and everything else. We want everybody to get along. And you know, you're never going to have a a 100. percent You know, there's always going to be bad characters and evil out here. You, you can't. It's absolutely. not a perfect life. You know, we're just humans, but but at the same time. Absolutely the majority can should be able to get along and it starts with with you and you and Robert De Niro. I'm telling you, that's the answer. That is the answer, folks. Robert De Niro and Tony Lobianco in the same room. <laughs> no, that would be really cool. That would be Tony, you're awesome, man. It's a, it's a pleasure. I can't wait to see you again. Hopefully this COVID stuff ends soon and I come down and visit you and your beautiful wife, Elise, and the farm. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. we'd love you to have yeah. you, my friend. Please. No, no, you're awesome. And even, even you know, we're very safe and isolated here. And, and you know, it's it's very safe to come here uh, during even during this terrible time, you know, with the COVID and yeah. so on. So and whenever you're whenever you're free, you know, let's get, please let us know. We were here. I've been here since March 18th, actually. Wow. Uh, so you've been isolated you know, as well. Yeah. Back to New York City. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so New York, yeah. anytime soon or not? No more again? Yeah. <laughs> you done? Please, I don't know what the heck is going on there. It's yeah. uh, it's one it's one thing after another. Yeah. I mean, the COVID is is uh, uh, enraged, and the other th- uh, violence is is enraged. The shootings, yeah. and the killings, and the you know uh, taking away six hundred under the, the taking away six hundred detectives wow. undercover guys, and then cutting up billion dollars from the from the police budget i mean okay. yeah. come on you, no prisons and no police hey that's the last time right. did i see you up there too you did you live like right at the edge of central park and an apartment you, you were in an apartment i yeah. came up and visited yeah, you yeah, yeah we're at right who was the central young park. guy with you there there was a young guy with you at the time and he yeah Chris. and he's doing Chris. very well right now too as, as well he's doing pretty uh-huh. good with the with his with uh-huh. his dinners and things like that Yes, but, uh, yeah. you're awesome, Tony, man. It's, it's 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 an it's an honor to know you and everything else, and and let's let's uh, we got to get Robert De Niro and you together, and, and if you guys <laughs> if you guys could hash things out, anybody can. It's like really, no, I believe in that. I believe things could be hashed out without both of you putting on gloves and fighting it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you're sure. awesome, buddy. Right. Tony, thank you so <laughs> much for for being with me today, and and. Uh, it's a pleasure. Tony Lobianco, everybody. Unbelievable. God bless God you. God bless you, bud. God bless you, my dear friend. God bless Love the you. troops, baby, and, the, and our veterans. That's the main thing. That's what, Absolutely. That's what we're both. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. If you get a chance, you know, please show it. You know, if you could, if you, as a way of showing it on your show yeah. or or certainly people go go to go to watch. You know, it, that, that's a great movie. idea. I'm going to put that the, just a common soldier right on the website. That that would be I put a link right there. Oh, that would, that be, would be really great. Yeah. yeah, get more people to see that, Tony. Sure. All right, bud. Thank you. All right, All pal. Right. God bless you. you huh? Too, bud. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, everybody. This is it. Signal relief. I know what you're thinking. What the heck is it? It looks like alien technology of some kind. But let me tell you something. This really works. I mean, I worked at a steel mill. I lifted weights when I was younger, and I hurt my back so bad. And chronic back pain for the, like, I don't know, the last 20 years. And my buddy Mike sent me one of these in the mail, stuck it on my back while watching TV for an hour, and all of a sudden the pain's gone. This is the real deal. Brave reviews. Signal Relief. You can find it on the podcast site, Jim Carroll dot com forward slash podcast or i think it's signalrelief.com is connected with that as well one of the best things i ever seen in my life signal relief thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of beating the odds with jim carroll today on the podcast we had actor tony lobianco please visit jimcarroll.com slash podcast to listen and watch on all of your favorite platforms. Also visit the link in the description to watch and listen to Tony's amazing poem, Just a Common Soldier. Visit signalrelief.com and use exclusive promo code MEMORY only for our Beating the Odds listeners. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.